Dear viewer, you are watching The Open Truth. My name is Lasuba Memo. I am the program, uh, program host. I'm very privileged to step into the office of the Minister of Labour. You may ask why this time in the um, office of the Minister of Labour. Well, I'm introducing to you another segment. As you know, the country is uh, counting to the 10th independence anniversary, and that's exactly uh, the episode we will be talking about. And why the Ministry of Labour? This is one of the sensitive um, dockets in, in the government. Everyone wants job, isn't it? Don't you want job? Job is important because you need to get money and live a decent life. But well, as we try to talk about this, I'm glad to be speaking to uh, the minister himself, who was actually a freedom fighter and is a man who has been very peaceful. And if you recall 2013, 2016, you never heard about him taking any arms. But all along, he has been uh, just down to his knees and praying that this country uh, achieves uh, lasting peace. And he's serving in. Uh, he earlier served as uh, the Minister of uh, Defence, but now got oh, another Chief, Chief of the Chief of uh, Chief of General Staff. Yes, he one time served as uh, Chief of General Chief Staff. Chief of General Staff. Oh, the SPL, yeah. And that is one of the very difficult uh, positions to hold in the army. And you know a lot of stories about the army human rights and all sorts of things that happen in that docket. It's not easy given the complexity of uh, this country. But here today. He is uh, serving as a Minister of Labour, which is one of uh, the um, ministerial positions under the 2018 peace deal. So he'll be telling us about his, his journey as um, a freedom fighter and now a politician. It's my uh, pleasure speaking to you, uh, Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Lesuba Mama. And I'm very glad to see you today physically. Of course, we met one time, but I was not paying attention. You forgot about me. Yes. <laughs> now you, I thought you are very big. Ah, uh, no. Because your voice and your body doesn't match to it. Really, really. So, so many people do say that. Uh, they really want to see you. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so, so I'm, I'm happy that uh, for uh, hosting me in your program. And um, I'm, I'm very happy uh, with also iRadio. You are really educating uh, our people also. Sometimes you pay uh, attention to problems sometimes. <laughs> and you don't talk of, of, uh, of achievement that uh, right. has been done. Uh, but all in all, uh, journalists, this, this is their habit. This is their way. You see, when you, right. <coughs> when you tell uh, something that will not attract people. <laughs> you don't go for it. Sometimes problems attract people. But anyway, yes. thank you very much. And I, li I like your program. And, uh, and uh, you know, one time, yes. I said now, I read you, you miss a very good presenter. This is, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, is it uncle or what? The one we, we was actually doing program with you now is in uh, oh. Nicatora Radio. Yes, it's uh, uh, DJ Lomis. Yes, yes, right. yes, 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 yes. He's a very, very nice presenter. It's true. And, and, it's and, true. and one time I, I asked him, <laughs> now why do, why do you, <laughs> why did you leave the, the I Radio? Is it, are they not paying you well or what? Mm -hmm. He said, no, I think that's, you want to. Right. You remember also one time I was outside I read and I, am, I still come back. Yeah, that's, that's what life No, that's is. fine. That's yes. fine. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's and, my uh, pleasure coming to your office. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for paying me uh, uh, this uh, honor to be with you today. Uh, so, Minister, yes, let's talk about um, the 10th Independence Anniversary, which we are soon celebrating as a country. And, Minister, in my introduction, uh, is that you. Uh, one of those who actually fought a good fight, that a good fight because it brought about the independence of this country that I'm also proud of, and I'm proud of you. And um, so far as the country um, is implementing peace, having gone um, intermittent conflict after gaining independence in 2011, and then boom, we had. Um, fighting in 2013 and 2016, but uh, since then, uh, of course, you have been uh, in Juba, 
and never uh, uh, taken um, anything like arms. So what is your reflection today as we move towards the 10th independence anniversary? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Lasuba. Uh, in fact, let me reflect back to our early years of struggle. Uh, we started when we were in school uh, as young people. We were seeing uh, policies of cartoon government that were not much with our reality in South Sudan. And, 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 and Anyanya too was fighting. So we were inspired actually by Anyanya too. Seeing what was being done by Khartoum, and then uh, they push us actually to Anyanya too. So we the group ourselves in the schools, and and and, and we form cells where we advertise for people to take arms, at least to liberate ourselves. We have border issues. We have oil refinery. We have what we call cash in Khartoum. We have all sort of of, of things being done by Khartoum government to. To, to at least I don't call it black people as such, but to referee, a periphery of, 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 of the of the country. So we were very busy recruiting even our uh, our senior people, the politician, army, police. At least we talked to them. And I remember in Malakal, uh, our president, uh, General Salva Kirmayadi, he was actually part of us, although he was responsible for security of the of uh, of the of Upper Nile. He was the chief of intelligence, but he was working with us. And this is the beauty of when people work together. You know? Uh, so he was advising us. He was giving us information that sometime we turn into into book uh, booklet we uh, send it on the street uh, trying to convince people this is what the regime is doing. Uh, we succeeded because we were in contact with senior officers, Dr. John, Carabina, William Yon, those of our, we were all uh, connected, you know, and, and, and it was very good. And was that unity of public? Very, un very, very big unity, really. And then, of course, when the incident, uh, incident of uh, 16 May happened, of course, many people, of course, have to leave. And, and we went to the bush. We went to the bush. Establishing the SPLA, SPLM also was not uh, an easy issue. It, was, we have, it has gone through so many difficulties. Uh, and we uh, got Anyanya to who were there. They have their own different perception, their own idea, their own ideology. Uh, for us, for those of Dr. John, William Yon, Karbin, and uh, President uh, Selfa with their colleagues to change that ideology into, into a new one was uh, yes, met with a very uh, steep uh, resistance. Uh, so we, we, we lost life, we fought, but we managed to, to form the, the, the movement. And, and, and we were really still one. We were having some small problems there, but these are problems of, 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 of more people. If you are in one place, they you do, you do, yeah, yeah, you don't expect everybody to have the same. Right. But we managed really to, to form ourselves and convince Southerners to join, and they join in thousands. So we were able to fight a war. And because people were really energetic, we thought that if we go in thousands, we are going to finish this one in only two years, everything will be over. But uh, the history proved us wrong. Army struggle is not easy at all. It took us 21 years. Why didn't, why, why didn't you use uh, the experience of the liberation actually to resolve uh, the internal dispute within the SPL and that resulted in 2013. So what, what exactly went wrong? Well, uh, I, uh, you know, this is a, 
Sometimes mindset of people is completely different. People behave, they don't behave the same, right? In the SPLM, I was not part of the political bureau, but uh, I was uh, the chief of uh, uh, sub of the SPLA. I was a soldier, very far from politics. But we could send the problem in the, in the, in the party. And this is, uh, this is actually, formation always a problem. Uh, so people differ. Very small thing that cannot kill people. But because also I would say because of our situation, and uh, then we could not, they could not uh, resolve the issue. These are issues that they cannot actually bring problem to people. But I want to underline one thing. You know, uh, forming a state is not easy. The big nations, the first world today, if you can reflect on their formation, they were formed under problems, conflicts. The parties fought among themselves, yes. and today they are back together. Yes. So, if you take the history of Europe, yeah. Europe fought themselves, now they were 360. Now there are 27 countries. After million, million of people lost their lives. So, it's the same. Now we fought, we could not understand ourselves that time, and we fought, now we are together. Do we, do we understand ourselves today? Uh, well, I think I would say even not 100%, but yes, we understand ourselves. That's why people are here. Yesterday we fought, we killed ourselves, and we realized that this killing, there's no way we are, we, are, we, are, we are going. It's not 100%, but at least coming of those who, 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 who rebelled last time, and now they are with us, the same uh, government. It means that there is at least understanding. So what should the politicians, including you, uh, do this time to ensure that they use this opportunity of the peace agreement um, to bring about lasting peace in the country? Yeah, you know, you know to bring peace. First, you have to have peace within yourself, as a person, within yourself. Without that, it's going to be difficult for you to make peace with other people. And we have to admit, also, as leaders of this country, leaders of this nation, leaders of the SPLM, SPLA, that we have gone wrong somewhere. All right? We have gone wrong somewhere. And what we are doing now, these are not the objective for which we have taken arms. All right? So if we ad admit that, and then we will be in a, in a subside, which we also almost admit that something has gone wrong. And people have to come together. We are still struggling to implement peace. But you know, to implement or to change something is a process. That's true. You need really to change the mindset to, you see, the way people behave slowly. All right? Until they realize this is the only way. But there is no other way we need peace. If we want really to rule this country in a peaceful manner, if we want to prosper, if we want to develop, as people want to, to enjoy the fruit of our suffering during the uh, Anyanya 1, Anyanya 2 struggle, and even today, 2013, 16, it's only that we make peace. And we have to accept the reality. And to make peace, I have a lot of uh, sacrifices. You have to sacrifice some of your rights, really, at least to, to have peace. Otherwise, if we stick into our opinion and then we will not have peace so as a politician we really need peace within ourselves and we need peace among ourselves then we can spread out to to our people the population i don't think that they they have big problem it is that thing we import to them that cause problem to them let's talk about your docket now uh, that is the ministry of labor initially um, Minister of uh, Labour and Human Resources, which is now being split under the uh, 2018 peace deal. And uh, is the ministry actually to its, to its full gear now? Yeah, well, uh, uh, yes, I am happy uh, that uh, I'm doing what I could 
uh, to help our people. Uh, I was appointed in August uh, 2018 as a Minister of Labor, Public Service and Human Resource Development. And when I came in, uh, I found out that we don't have data for <laughs> our working force. So a little bit, I put aside the labor, but I was concentrating on public service. And we did something we called headcount. And now I think... You went my, from one institution to another to headcount? Yes, headcount. All the 70 institutions here in South Sudan. Wasn't it tedious? It is. Because we got also resistant. We got everything in mass. Files were not there. We, uh, it was really very tedious. But very that's big the, problem. That's the basis but, people are paid. But, uh, but we, yeah. we managed we manage to, to, to get all the files and then compare it with our pay, uh, pay sheet here and we find all the problems. <laughs> what did you find? What problem did you find? So many problems. We, one, we have ghost names, no less than 3,000 ghost names. We don't know where about. We found out that uh, we we have even problem of certificates. Wow. People are working. You get somebody with high profile there. We found out that uh, today you are a graduate, and then tomorrow you get yourself a, a director general or even under secretary, which is really, according to public se public service rules, it's not allowed that. And and and. and we found out that we have over 600 who are eligible for pension. They are occupying positions, they are all, but occupying positions that are supposed to be occupied by young people. So we, we found that one. It was difficult, but we managed to present our finding into Council of Ministers, which they approved that they have to be implemented. And now my colleague, uh, Fakasero, is, is working on it. All right. Now, of course, because of 2018 uh, agreement, the minister is split into two. Uh, now I'm in docket of labor, labor proper. <laughs> so now yeah. uh, we have so many programs. Also, we found out that we have some legal document that we are supposed to have. So what's your mandate? Le uh, mandate my mandate, we have 40 mandates. It's so many. One of it, employment, one of it, Work permit, of course, for aliens. One of it, uh, we have to, you know, we have to work with uh, uh, workers' trade union. We have to support all the, you know, all the, we have to make rule and regulation for all the businesses. We have to support them. We have to uh, also support and protect employer as well as employees. Right. They have so many issues and then we need really to, uh, to help them. And after all, we have to train vocational training centers. We have to provide skills and knowledge to our people so that they can work. And we have trained thousand, thousand of them. All if you go to market, those who are building, those who are welding, those who are uh, servicing cars, those are what? Some of them are our graduates in the level and vocational training centers. We have about seven and, and, and three or four uh, private uh, vocational centers and we are working to increase them so that we give our people at least a skill so that they, at least you have something to put on the table for your children and, and take care of, your, of, your, of your, yourself. So we have now we are doing a labor market assessment. We don't know the employment rate up to today, those who are working. Now you, you see people making a problem everywhere in, the, in, the, in our country. But you know, when you go to a statistic, you will get also we have people who are working. Our major problem is not because people are not working. In the NGO sector alone, we have uh, 33,000 in that sector. But 30,000 of them are South Sudanese. 30,000? Yes, they are South Sudanese. Yes. Now our major problem with our people, we misunderstood 
80 percent in our labor act say any institution in private sector must employment must take care of 80 percent from national national and we misunderstood the word national national is all the South Sudanese but our people could not go down with it we will talk about how they have misunderstood it but I still want to take you back to um, the assessment you did when you came to this office and you said you collected data and found so many uh, ghost names. And so how much money were you able to save? That, that, that is in public service. Right. That is in public service. Maybe they will tell you how many, much. Yeah, we, we recovered so many, we recovered a good amount of money because now we have people who were not there and then their name were removed uh, from uh, pay sheet. So uh, do we know the total number? Of I, 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 I don't know. Maybe yeah. Fagasura will, uh, will give you the good answer. Right. But with us here, this, uh, that one, we call it headcount. Right. What we are doing now is a labor market assessment. That's right. Where we are, we are coming even to you, if they have not gone to you yet. Okay. All right, to iRadio. Because you are a private uh, uh, radio station, you are part of our subject. We are going to you. Uh, we have to know all the workers who are working there. You're and welcome. yes, <laughs> yes I welcome. <laughs> if they have not gone to you, if they have not yet gone, they, they will go to you. Right. Now, so we want to know the unemployment rate of this country. We want to know those who are working. All right? It is very important. Every year we have to update. We train new people, we have to update. At least for the country to know those who are working. We don't know even the aliens who are working here in this country as the Minister of Labor here. Maybe those of uh, uh, interior, if they know. But it's, 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 now we are also getting difficulties. As I say, change always is problematic. What difficulty? You mean there is resistance? Yeah, so, so now we, almost we are going to six months now. We are actually trailing. We are moving very slowly. What challenges? No, it's challenge the people, they don't want, they don't know what are we going to do with this information. One of the problems of including individual, individual. Yeah, all of them, including even some companies. All right? So, but we told them now it is for our own use. It is secret, it is not a public document. It is for the Minister of Labor. Even if we want to release the, the findings, it is, will be only figures. All right? right. Uh, uh, only figures. But uh, I'm sure we are going to do. Now they are cooperating slowly, slowly with us, and they will give us. Uh, this one will help us in planning. Because government, at the end of the day, yeah. will trying to, and to support all this. That's true. All right? It will support them directly, not indirectly. All right? We are going to go in, into informal sector. All shops, we have to know, those are having shops. All right? There is nothing. going to take too long. Too yeah, long. it is too long, <laughs> but it's a must that we have to take that but one. But do you have the capacity uh, uh, well, as a ministry? Well, uh, yeah, as a nation, of course. Why not? We have the capacity, and uh, although we are going slowly, now we have one of our challenges, of course, you need resources. We have use here in, the, in Juba here. We can hire them if we have resources. So we are looking for resources, and we have volunteers from our use. They are doing it even now. All right, so if we have resources, we'll hire more of them, many of them. And then the, I think it's, it's not, it's, 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 it will take time, but it's not difficult to, to achieve. We will achieve it, I'm sure we will achieve it. I'm glad you, you did mention about um, protest uh, in the country um, over uh, unemployment. And we recently learned of what happened in the Eastern Equatoria, where the group called Monyomiji uh, went in and disrupted um, a UN agency and we had so many of these uh, in Upper Nile region and just so many in the past few uh, years. Yeah, months, and months, you yeah. also mentioned about South Sudanese still do not understand the 80% employment. So why don't they understand? What, what, what exactly is wrong there with the understanding? Yeah, you know, I think uh, Lasoba, uh, part of it the employment has been politicized, all right? It has been politicized. If you, if you see them, there's no logic there, all right? 
for, for example, Rang. Rang, we were having 523 employees working at Rang. 400, yes, 475, they are South Sudanese. And majority of them from Rang. All right? Moji uh, Moji, in Torit, you will get so many of them are working there. Because it is politicized. If I don't get a job myself, and then I think I would think that uh, everybody is not working. And we told them, you don't make noise. You can raise your complaint, which is okay. You can raise it. But it cannot go to extent that you want to beat, you want to send uh, NGOs away from the area. These NGOs are providing services to our own people. No, no, nobody else. We are still struggling, we have our economy is not okay, insecurity here in the country is there. So the only NGOs we are relying on them, giving med, uh, medical services, uh, humanitarian services, everything, incl including our schools. So we have to be mindful that these people, they are giving us services. If we have a problem, I'm not saying that you don't raise your problem, but raise your problem to do the right channel. All right, and then will be resolved. Now, coming back to 80%. For example, in Torit, the 80%, if we are looking for nurses, for example, is a technical work. All right? If we say we need 10 nurses or 20 or any number, if we have 10 nurses from the area, they have the priority. You can, but what will happen if you don't get anybody who is qualified there in the area? You can bring a nurse from Rang, from Raja, and work into it. You see, this is what we said about 80% national, not local. Because if you don't have, now what do you think that will happen? Do you leave that job without any? Because somebody is not there from the area? No. So we are working now, taking data from, from, from Torit. And then we will, we, will, we will tell them. You will get majority of them, they come from the area. Not so from our in, side. In this case, what should be done? Uh, don't you think awareness is also important? No, awareness is important, and this is what actually we are trying to do. 2018, we developed what we call guidelines in the NGO sector, recruitment guidelines. All right? To answer some of the, 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 the situation. Because we have some position where you don't need to bring somebody from outside, all right? Yes. You need to get people from local, like a driver. You can get driver local, like a cleaner, like a guard, okay? You get them local there. You don't need to bring somebody from anywhere, all right? But the other technical work, if you have somebody from the area, excellent. They have a priority, but if you don't get, and then you need to bring it from anywhere in South Sudan. And uh, we need yes, awareness, and now we are, uh, we are uh, planning to call all the Ministers of Labor in all the states and three administrative areas, uh, the Director General of Labor, and then RRC. We want to bring them to Yuba here. We will have at least three to four days workshop, and then at least to tell them the mandate of the labor. Right. All right? And then we need to synthesize our people. We need to tell them this is not the way. Now, Minister, we are working now to make sure that at least people get job. But they must know also, without security, it's going to be a problem. Now we don't have investors here. If security is there, and then investors will come, and then they will employ many people. And this is what we are trying to do in uh, booking the training center. We are training people in different trades. Okay, being an electrician, being a mechanic, being a carpenter, being what, builder. All this, we are, we are doing it in all these vocational trends. Even now we have fees and investors come and then they will get the manpower ready and then they will work. Minister, you seem to be setting the, the foundation for this institution to even to not know um, what our unemployment rate in the country is. Is that correct? Yes. After now we don't. 
We don't know. If you ask me or anybody here, they will, they will not tell you that, yes, it is this and that. No. You know? And for that, let me come back to this recru recruitment. According to our Labor Act, now we are actually establishing offices that mention in our law. Uh, recruitment. Recruitment, we have some offices who are not established. That will take care of rec recruitment. We have employment exchange. It's an office where you will have a card even for those who want to work. All right? We will keep all the... We are, we are actually uh, maybe two weeks or three weeks. We are putting a database here in the lab here. This database, we will ask any South Sudanese who is a graduate. They will send in all their CVs. We will keep them here. Any request from anybody, whether the NGOs or companies or whatever, they have to come to us. And they will show us which area they need. And then we will go through all this, uh, the pool of, of documents that we have, all these CVs. And then we will help them. This is number one. Number two, also we, will, uh, we are also considering licensing employment agents. All right? That will be responsible for employment. If you want to recruit, you will go to that employment. Of course, you will ask the, the permission from us, right. but that agents will help recruiting for you. And then this is what will uh, actually uh, reduce this a tendency of uh, being biased, that uh, nepotism, uh, you, you just uh, employ your person. Even advertisement is a problem. You know, sometimes you don't put it there, or even if you put it there, but the date of the... <laughs> All right? So, so we have a problem that we want to actually resolve those issues. We are actually making rule and regulation for our Labor Act. We want to translate all this into plans and, and regulations so that we all follow. Recruitment is there, minimal wages is there, now our people they are disadvantaged. They don't get anything. They are being cheated actually all over. All right? Who is uh, cheating them? Uh, wages, money, salaries. All right? They don't get the same, you see, uh, pay, equal payment for the same job. All right? Whether you are a expatriate and our locals, you are doing the same job, you must have also the same money, the same amount. All right? So, but we don't have the minimal wages. Where you don't, because it's business, but we will tell you that from here you don't go down. But you can go up according to your capacity. So we are working on this. We are working on the uh, occupational health and safety. If you go to a hotel now, the condition of working to, uh, to, to employees is very bad. We are putting also rule and regulation so that it is followed by any, including your office there. We have to see whether you are working in a very good environment. It is, is our work. We are actually making, uh, uh, we are uh, making uh, even curriculum for our BTCs, vocational training centers. It is our wish now and our vision that we really need to ship from consumers to producers. We will start it in a small scale. All right? We want to, now our people can invent a machine that can make oil. All right? right. So we, we, are, we are training. If you go to Tori now, you can get yogurt in Tori. Wow. That's interesting. Yes. We have trained, especially women, food processing. We are doing one in Rombeng now, and, and we are expecting to do more. At least we really need, in, including our toothpicks. Toothpicks, we can do it. But uh, very small things. We will, we will expand. We can make oil from Lulu, from granite, from even cotton seed, from Embiro. So we are working toward that. What does it take us to get there? Eh? What does it take us to get there? Uh, well, uh, because of the challenges that uh, I was telling you, uh, we have challenges of actually, yeah, but we, we will be there. I don't know when, but at least it is, uh, is our vision that we have to be there. We look now, we are either number two or three, or at least we are in when it comes to term of animals. So 
hide and his skins and in planting. And we are not benefiting from that. So we are planning also to make a list shoes, to make belt, to make this bag, to make jacket from Baron. So we will start it small, but we will expand. All right. And it is actually our program now. We are working toward that. Also, now if you, according to what we have found in the hotels, before foreigners are more. Simply because we don't have a trained people. Now we are opening uh, training very soon. We are working on it. We are de developing their curriculum, uh, catering, uh, hospitality, and tourism. We are actually looking at dropout girls and boys, senior dropout and girls. So we will train them so that also they can uh, they can sustain their life. We are working on that. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, but because we are handicapped. We are going slowly, you know the speed that we are expecting, because you need resources. What is tying your hands from budget? Uh, budget is not there. Then if, if you can have uh, seven months without uh, salary, then what are, you, uh, what are you talking about? Is it from ministry? <laughs> I haven't received any salaries for the last... Uh, no, we, we, now we are, we, are, we are receiving slowly. We are, the government is paying uh, us uh, our arrears. Mm -hmm. All right? So, yeah, we have in, uh, our number situation is uh, not because, good. Uh, we're wondering, even under which budget? Uh, um, this one? You're running your office. No, we are, uh, no, it, it really is it's difficult. This is uh, from hand to mouth. You see, sometimes the Minister of uh, Finance there gave you some operating uh, uh, operate costs, mm -hmm. which is not maybe after three months they come. All right, but we are working with our partners, developmental partners that are helping us. Right. We have UNDP, uh, Kingdom of Netherlands, yeah, we have uh, uh, other countries who are helping us, uh, setting all this. We are going slowly, really. How do you get the support of uh, the international community to your uh, ministry? Uh, do you see a change of attitude this time? Uh, yes, yes, uh, indeed, uh, there are. They are really, uh, they are changing, because what they need, I think, is peace. This is what they need more. And, and they are changing, they are coming back to support us. It's not like two, three years ago, all right? Yeah, even in the education uh, uh, sector, they are also helping, you see, at least for us to, to, to move until we settle, and then we take over, because uh, I think uh, we are the government, and we are supposed to take care of our people. Yeah, As we come to the close of this uh, interview, uh, Minister, maybe there is something that um, if you think it's worth mentioning as a uh, minister to uh, the citizens. Uh, maybe a reflection of uh, how far you want to go from here as the Minister of Labour and what changes do you want to see uh, or what do you hope uh, in, in the coming year as we um, approach the 10th Independence Anniversary? You know, uh, as a Minister of Labour, um, uh, aspiring to to make sure that after two to three years, at least I have over 500,000 young people who are working. And this is actually a vision we are moving towards. We are also, it's our vision to open more vocational training centers. At least we give them uh, skills and knowledge for them to sustain their life. Uh, for us to achieve that, of course, we need fees. Uh, fees if it's there, fees will bring you roads. And if you are building roads, and then I have people who will work, we will provide them. If you are doing uh, construction, we have to provide manpower. Anything to do with businesses, it is our work now to provide that workforce and, 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 and uh, at least to make sure that those who are continuing playing dominoes even at night, uh, uh, playing cards and what, we'll yes, at least we, we, we will take them we, to work at least, all right. And also I'm um, expecting that uh, this peace will prevail and will be a reality and we will have a lasting peace. 
so that we can do anything freely without fear. And, 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 uh, and, and it is my wish also that I want to see South Sudan first firing, coming back. You know, the way we are, we are now, uh, some people are seeing us as very chaotic people, you know, our neighbors, all right, which is not true. So, and then always I say as, as a liberator, I say that I'm still indebted by our people, you know. We have to pay them back, our people. Myself, I, I have a father and, mom, I, and mother. They actually contribute, this is part of their contribution to, to the liberation. To get me into to the SPLM, SPLA, to, to train me and wage a war of liberation. All of us, our people, they have contributed their children. They have contributed their food. They were the transport of, 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 of our equipment. So we really need to pay them back. To pay them back, we need fees so that we can build road to them, so that we can build a school to them. Their children have to get to school. And then med medical services, they, they have to get. They have to get clean water, all right? At least these are things that they need. They're nothing, they don't need money, all right? They don't need money. And, and I, it is actually my, uh, my wish to achieve that. Uh, to achieve that, but I'm optimistic that that one will happen, will happen. There is nothing permanent, thing comes out, go. All right, even this conflict now, the mood now is not like two years ago. At least there is a change of heart and people are moving toward achieving a lasting peace. What I need from our people, sometime patient pay. Don't destroy it, what we already done. And now people who are really taking law into their own hands, let us try to raise our concern in an amicable way. Uh, not, not, not taking law into your own hands. Somebody coming from very far to come and help you, and then now you mistreat him, that person. Uh, it is a problem. So what I want to tell our youth all over South Sudan is that let us work together raise your concern to us here in the ministry and then we will resolve them and we are actually as i said this whatever we are doing here we are actually moving towards that uh, uh, resolution of those conflicts because if we have, if we now manage to reorganize uh, recruitment and then but now you have to compete you are not going to be Fixed there because you come from the particular area. No, you have to have a, at least a, a skill and, and a knowledge at least. Having come all the way, all, all along from the civil war to uh, another civil war created by uh, South Sudanese themselves, and now was transitioning in a peace time. So, if somebody asks you in summary, what is the truth about this country? The truth of this country. The country is called the Republic of South Sudan. We are a sovereign country and, and we are very proud that we have our own country despite the fact that we have problems. Problems everywhere, all right? But we have to have wisdom to resolve those problems. I'm sure South Sudan, I'm part of it. I will do what I can to make sure that this country is peaceful and, and our people are enjoying fruit of their suffering that they have uh, suffered uh, 50 years back, all right? And, and, and this is my, uh, as a person, I have to work toward that. I don't believe with wars. I don't want to fight because I want to become somebody. No, I don't at all. I'm a good citizen. Uh, if fees is there, I can go to my village, cultivate, do my own things, not necessarily with the government, all right? And, 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 and I want people to think over that. We don't fight over leadership. Leadership, we, are, we have all right in this country. Anybody can be a leader. And if you are there, and then people need to support you until your term is over. And then we continue. But if we want to take it by force, and then this is what actually causes all these problems in this country. So we really need to be patient. Uh, each time, 
has its own situation. So as a person, I want our people to be really patient, to forgive each other, and let us work according to our reality of the situation. Honorable Minister, um, of my, it's really my pleasure speaking to you. I'm really thrilled coming to your office and receiving this um, um, you know, warm welcome uh, to come and speak to you. Thank you very much, and then I'm ready for any time. Thank you indeed. Thank you. And now I want you to be also our ambassadors. At least come every the time and see good things that we are doing, not not reporting all these. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. true. That's true. So you visit any Yeah, yeah. Visit. At least to come and see also yeah. the positive thing that uh, we are doing, now or any or any 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 <laughs> any 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 ministry is doing. Yeah. yeah. Honourable Minister. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I have seen the positive things you're doing, and uh, I wish you all the best. I Thank you. In endeavor to do the changes you are all opting um, in the coming years. Thank you. you have stated three years. Thank and you. Your viewer, thank you for watching this edition of uh, the, um, or rather, the countdown to our independence on the, the Open Truth segment. It's been a really amazing speaking to the Minister of Labour. Uh, General uh, Othmai, who has really told us uh, what his uh, docket is doing. The docket is actually under the 2018 uh, peace agreement. So this is just the first of our edition. We look forward to uh, be speaking to so many government officials. By the way, get to know uh, who your constitutional postholders are. Until next time, bye for now.